Welcome to Table Talk, where there's always room at the table. I am your host, Jonathan Harmon of the J. Harmon Home Team, and we can't wait to talk to these fine guests. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Table Talk, where there's always room at the table. I am your host, Jonathan Harmon of the J. Harmon Home Team, and we can't wait to talk to these fine guests. Enjoy the show. All right, you're on. All right. Hello. Welcome to Table Talk. I'm uh, I'm flying without without a seatbelt today. I don't have my, my headphones on, so it's a little weird. Um, I, I actually like the way I sound in headphones better than I do yeah. without, so... Uh, I'm feeling a little uncomfortable, Joel. It's all right. Same here. I'm, I'm glad you're here with me. Me though. too. Me yeah. too. I'm here. So this is my friend Joel Bigelow <clears throat> with Endure Athletics, and uh, I just offended him about uh, three minutes ago before we got on air. So anyway, he set me straight. So we're we're all good <laughs> now. But anyway, um, it's what I do sometimes, I guess. But um, anyway, so Endure Athletics, um, really really cool organization here in Murfreesboro. Uh, serving uh, a community that, that quite frankly, before I heard your story, I, I really didn't. I mean, I hate to say it this way, but I didn't really know existed. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Yep. Um, I mean, you kind of know that it exists, but, but not really. Like, mm-hmm. all right, and it will. I promise, I'll tell you what he does. But, um, <laughs> like the homeless population, right? Like you, you drive through town or whatever, and you see the guy under the bridge, yes. or you see the guy in the corner or whatever. Right. Like it's visible. Yes. You know, even yes. if even if you choose to ignore it, it's yes, you see it. Yep. But your population is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, and I know the county has a name for it. the the school system calls mm-hmm. them Atlas Atlas. But the, but what is it? What is that? So what is that transient? Is that the word? Basically. Um, so it's a McKinney Vento Act is really what it is. And that just. um <clears throat> it allows us to be able to kind of track the kids, you know, and that's in and out of local motels, doubled and tripled up on somebody's couch, homeless shelters, all those type of kids. Those are all the kids that we serve. So it's it's not necessarily sometimes, but it's not necessarily kids that are like truly homeless, like sleeping in a car well, it or, is. or on the street sometimes. Yes. But it's also, and you just mentioned this, yeah. kids in motels in campers and and somebody's couch and all the above all the above for sure um you know because it, it, a motel is not a home you know right. they're paying night by night or for a week and they maybe have enough money for the week before they have to go somewhere else right or for a car for a couple of days while they're trying to get the money for this one or that one right um so they are very transient they mm-hmm. move all around um certainly no permanent address and no structure and stability absolutely 100 percent yeah. And, and, you know, we could get into all the whys and the, <laughs> all of that stuff. My goodness, that's it a, goes on forever. Sure. Yeah, it does. And, and, you know, <clears throat> my, my favorite is when people just try to like make a blanket statement. Oh, well, they just, they just choose to be homeless yeah. or, you know, they just choose. Not, and I'm like, come on, man. It's mm-hmm. is really, is it that simple? Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, a lot of it for us is a single mom that has four or five kids um an aunt a grandma trying to take care of their kids so a lot of it is you know just trying to survive and they're and it's truly what it is it's survival from day to day to day you know Mm -hmm. how can i make it through today then i'll worry about tomorrow tomorrow Mm -hmm. um sure there's a lot of other different aspects and different things that happens in their lives um but that's why we just we just try to walk alongside them right like we don't um we want to support them. We want to support the kids. And we would just want to show them a different way of life mm-hmm. that um, that they can break out of the vicious cycle of poverty. Because mm-hmm. that's what all of our families are in. They are truly in the vicious cycle of poverty. And, and it begets more poverty. And then, you know. Yeah. And they, to break <clears throat> out of that is is it's extremely difficult. Um, all the research shows that it takes a, uh, an intervention and an education to break the cycle of poverty. Sure. And that's kind of how we model what we do. Um, and there is the intervention, throwing a ball around with a kid, growing a relationship with a kid, um, you know, and kind of through that, we can dive into how school going, what's going on at school. Education is important. 
you know, all those other different aspects. So, yeah. And I, and I think the, the key here is, you know, you look at, if you do get down to the whys, right. So, you know, mom made a bad decision or, you know, dad walked out or, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, but just the, a hard time, whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is, it's not the kid's fault. Absolutely. And that's, and I think that's the thing yeah. is you guys look at that and go, Hey, we'll walk with you, mm -hmm. but let's really try to pull this kid up. Absolutely. I mean, we're in it for the long term. Um, we've had kids, we're entering year eight into our organization and we've, and we've still served kids that we served eight years ago. Mm -hmm. So we're truly in it for the long term. Um, we want to continue to walk with them, to continue to um, mentor them and love them. And um, again, it, it takes a long time to be able to work out, yeah. work outside of the, you know, their vicious cycle. So, so for, for the, the folks <clears throat> that maybe have not heard of your organization sure. and not heard me uh, <laughs> like give my elevator speech about yeah. your organization, um, how did you guys form? What, what, Walk me through that story again. Sure. So um, about eight years ago, I was working in a local steel manufacturing plant. And um, right in front of the plant is one of the most notorious rundown motels here in town. Um, at one time, it actually had the highest amount of registered sex offenders in the state of Tennessee that called this place home. And um, throughout the time working in the steel mill, um, seeing kids running around there, knowing exactly what's going on there. And it just... Um, the Lord worked on my heart that we decided to quit the steel manufacturing and and start a nonprofit. And um, and at the time, we really didn't even know what that was or what any of this was going to look like. But, um, you know, throughout these eight years, we just continued to build off from we started out with eight kids and I would serve about 60, 65 kids. And and uh, the at the beginning your focus was one thing and now that's still part of your mission but it's grown it has grown tremendously <laughs> it has evolved so yeah. what did you guys start out like what was the simple mission at the beginning the simple mission at the beginning was to give these kids an opportunity to be able to have a home cooked meal every saturday and have a place that kids should be able to go outside and play and do things in a safe environment every saturday mm -hmm. that is how we started that's how i met trent um, and that is really where our organization started at on a field behind steel technologies where I used to work at. And, um, that is literally where we started at. And then we looked at what was next. So after that, we started up our, uh, our summer camp was next. So then we did a nine week summer camp to be able to give their kids an opportunity to be able to do stuff that every kid should be able to do in the summertime. Sure. Instead of being stuck inside a 200 square foot motel room with However with, many people. However many people, not knowing where their next meal is coming from. Cooking on a hot plate. That, that lovely hot plate, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and then we went into our after-school program. Um, and and then, you got several partners on that, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have um, other enrichment activities that we do now. So during fall break and winter break and all these other school breaks that um, we get an opportunity to go out and explore the world outside so um, we do that with them as well so they can go back to school and have something you know to be able to talk about you know instead of just sitting in there so and i remember you telling me that story that you know and you think about this like you, you don't you don't really realize what all you take for granted absolutely um and you don't have to have a whole heck of a lot of privilege to have mm -hmm. things that you take for granted yeah. so something as simple as all the kids coming back from school saying you know, well, what did you do on fall break? Well, mm -hmm. we went swimming and we did this and we did this and we did this. Yeah. Or, you know, rode my bike around the neighborhood and, you know, played football or yeah. went on a vacation or saw this concert or mm -hmm. fill in the blank. Right. Yeah. I mean, but then there's that other kid that's like. I sat in a motel room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's the end of their story. That's it. And so they just don't say anything and they just kind of shrink and they feel at that point that they are less than the other kids absolutely and man that happens over and over and over and over and all of a sudden their mentality their identity is that they are less yes and there's the wash rinse repeat yeah and that's so that's our goal and like you're saying as as we started the organization our 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 thought process consistently was what do the kids need not what do we need what do the kids need mm -hmm. and that's kind of how we have evolved into doing all these other aspects of things um, another big point 
um, we do a lot with counseling. Like we actually, we have a really good partnership with the local counseling and uh, we actually take kids out of school, take them for their hour counseling session, feed them, take them back to school. Um, the mental health piece is, is so critical um, for their success. These, these, these weights that these kids have on their shoulders, the stuff again, they've seen the, all the above, they unfortunately are going to have to deal with it, right? Like they're, they, they can't unsee it. They can't undo it. Um, so we hope through counseling that we're giving them tools in their toolbox that they don't have to turn to drugs, sex, alcohol, all these other things when they grow old, you know, that yeah. they're going to have the mental tools to be able to, to work through them because they're going to have to work through them. Yeah. Um, can't help just, the hand you were given. Yeah. Yeah. All you can do is learn how to play. Absolutely. It. Absolutely. So that's been a really big part of what we do too. And that's a piece that I never thought that I would bring in. Like I didn't want to do, you know, I wanted to play sports. I wanted to love on some kids. Um, but that but mental guys, health is critical. But you guys also support them in, um, you mentioned sports. So yeah. in your athletics, yes. right? Yes. Um, so one of the things you guys started out doing was, you know, you got this kid that wants to play football yep. and it's free to play football for a school team, right? <laughs> after you buy the cleats, after yeah. you pay for a physical, yeah. after you, you know, after you the, fundraise, yeah, everybody, all, all yes. of these different things. Yes. And and if you live somewhere, you got to go fundraise, and and you're at one of yeah. those motels. It's like, mm. yeah, we can't even pay. We can't even pay for the night, right? And you want yeah. me to go out here and fundraise, right? Exactly. Uh, so, so you guys assist absolutely. with all of those things, absolutely. Um, just like you said, we, um, we assist with all, all the above that any of our kids that want to play sport, um, they do not have to turn around and walk out of that meeting because we have had kids like that before. It's like, Oh, how was your football meeting? How did that go? And like, I turned around and left when they told me X amount of dollars, you know, it was going to cost. I'm like, it's not going to happen. I'm like, well, you can go back in there tomorrow, you know, yeah. just get it taken care of. So. Well, that's just it, man. You think about this. And you said it, you're struggling as a family, you're struggling to figure out how to come up with 30 bucks yeah. for the, for the night at this, yep. this horrible, horrible motel. And, and then I come in as your kid and I'm like, Hey, I need a pair of cleats that yep. it's going to be $60 or mm -hmm. more, you know, got to get a physical that I'm going to go to a walk-in clinic. It's going to be $50 yep. or more, you know? And it's like, it's a, it's a non-starter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and the kids know it too. Yeah. You know, they know not to walk in you know, to their, to their room and be like, Hey, I need X, Y, and Z. I mean, they, they know the struggles. They yeah. know exactly what's going on. So yeah. Cause they've slept in a car Absolutely. for two nights while yeah. they got the money for the, for the, yeah. and they, they may have been the ones that had to go and figure out how to get the money. Correct. Yeah. So very tough, but, um, we're, we're honored and blessed to be able to serve the kids that we serve. Um, we were truly have some remarkable kids um, that just need that just need a hand, you know, they just need a hand up, not necessarily, not necessarily a handout. And, um, they just need somebody to love them and show them a little bit of different way of life. And like I said, the, the moms and the grandmas, they're doing the best that they can, you know, I mean, they're, they're literally doing the best that they can. Sure. And they're very respectful and kind and loving, and they truly appreciate what we do. Um, so yeah, things have been things have been good, and well, we've yeah. had some really good successes so far. From their mindset, you know, they are doing the best they can. Mm -hmm. Some of them work in multiple jobs. Yep. Some of them are, you know, if they've got several different ages of kids, yes. that they're not working multiple jobs. Yep. They can't. They can't. You know, a lot of people don't know that either. I mean, the the daycare system and all that stuff here is is brutal. Oh my god, it's brutal. So expensive. <laughs> so expensive. Yes. And I, I mean, and it doesn't even have to be a quote. No, good one no it doesn't matter it it's doesn't expensive. matter um and then you end up so i'm going to work to pay the daycare mm -hmm. so that i can go to work yep. to pay the daycare like yeah. it, that just doesn't make, that yeah. make sense yep. um but i, I think and, and so i'm going to say this but i don't necessarily mean it how it sounds a lot of times the kids just need someone to give a damn yeah 100 percent you know, absolutely hundred percent. And, and it's not, and not that their parents don't, but it, it, it you look at like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? They're mm -hmm. in the survival. Yep. We're going to make sure that, that, you know, you have some type of a roof over your head yep. doing the best we can do. Mm -hmm. But here's somebody else that has a little more resources, a little more opportunity and has focused like their job now mm -hmm. is to do this. 
Yeah, and it's a great outlet for the kids, right? I mean, if you just to go back into your motel room after school and being stuck inside this, again, this 200 square foot motel room is awful, you know, but to be able to take them out of that environment to go and play and to get, um, we're building relationships, not only with us and the kids, but the kids themselves are building strong relationships. Sure. Like we're a big family and for them not to common have to, history. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the connection, right? Yeah. What And, and you, if you're watching, think about this, okay? When you meet somebody new, what's the first thing you ask them? What do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. And then when they say that, they're like, oh, well, my granddad did that. or yeah. And so you immediately try to find common history. Mm -hmm. That's how we connect. Yes. What's our – you said it. You're from you're from Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my yeah, dad's my dad. from Pennsylvania. Yeah. So instantly we're, we're trying yeah. to work a connection. Yes. Well, this kid has no common history with most of the kids in their school. You are correct, except when they come to endure. Exactly. They do not have to look over their shoulder. They all know that they're all in this together. They don't have to be building. embarrassed because that kid's in the same boat as you are. Correct. When they get dropped off, you know, at their different motels, nobody has to um, say, hey, drop me off last because I'm live over here or there. Yeah. Um so yeah, I think it's I think it's great. I really do. I'm, I'm really at first I got it eight years ago. I didn't want that. Eight years ago, I wanted these kids to be normal. I wanted them to be with other kids that were normal, if you will. And man, I was really wrong. Yeah, because the bonds that they've built. Um, again, the, the, some of the kids that have been with us eight years, um, they still are in group text together. They go out and do stuff together. Um, so it's just a really cool to see them, you know, support each other and love on each other and really take care of each other. And it, it's different. It's really different. And it's super, super unique. And guess what? It's their normal. It is. And normal yeah. is okay. It is. Right. Yeah. Normal is so relative. It is. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like to think that I'm normal. And then I look at myself and I'm like, yeah, you're not. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, it is. That's, that's, <laughs> that's same here. <laughs> So, I always wonder what the heck I'm doing every day. Like, all right, man, was this normal? Or am I just <laughs> like, this? And then you figure out it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Uh -huh. It doesn't matter. So y'all have had y'all have had a couple of big, big successes. We have, lately. man. Um, man, I'm gonna brag on Lamorius. Um, Lamorius is 22. He was the first kid in our program eight years ago. First kid that I met, and um, and watching him go through high school. And, um, and then, you know, Hey man, you want to go to college? And he said, yes. So he just graduated MTSU three and a half weeks ago. I think, um, this summer he graduated from MTSU and he's a first generation college student. And I just couldn't be more proud of him. I mean, he worked through, he's worked through so much stuff, um, so much adversity in his life and to be able to fight through that and, and do it all. What's his degree in? He is a uh, sports and leisure science. Nice. So um, super excited for him. Um, and kind of through that too, you know, we've, we mentored him through college. Like he, we just didn't throw him over there. Yeah. One of our staff actually met with him every week and just, you know, where are you at? What does your schedule look like? And, you know, and just, again, keeping that relationship going. Yeah. Um, COVID was tough, of course, for everybody. And sure. he, and he had to be a man during that time. He actually came in my office and said, hey, I need to talk to you. And he failed a class. And he's like, you know, but I was so proud that he had the guts to come in and tell me, you know, and we. And he didn't quit. He didn't quit. We That's just circled thing. back around. Like, we look, took it the next semester. It, it happens sometimes, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that just means you got to double down yeah. the next time. Yeah. So that's super, it's super Good exciting job, to bud. see him, um, you know, from eight years ago to a very, to Trent knows he was so quiet. He was such a quiet hide in a corner type kid very 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 shy and um to watch him walk down the aisle in his cap and gown man um was one of the most amazing yeah that's all right yeah i got you bud <laughs> um all right and so then you just, but then yes yes then we they, got another one, <laughs> another one. Reload. <laughs> so we have another another um another female or a female that uh, she was in our program six or seven years in and out of almost every motel that you can think about in town, um, in and out of the Salvation Army, um, you know, homeless shelter as well. 
cars this these kiddos have been through a lot a lot a lot a lot and um super 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 proud of her that she graduated with over a 3.0 um and then she's now at mtsc graduated high school graduated high school mm -hmm. and now she's um we got her in a dorm at mtsu she's on campus um she has a job on campus she has everything that she needs and it's you know it's 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 her first home if you will you know i mean that that security of going she knows back where to the same place yeah. and she knows she's going to be there yes for a, a an extended it's, period of time yeah um so it's super exciting for her she's doing very 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 well um friends already in the dorms you know and just just meshing right yeah and just giving her that opportunity has just been wonderful and you know <coughs> excuse me and i don't remember if it was talking to you or, or somebody else that that is in a in a another area that that deals with the transient population think about okay something that, that all of us can a lot of the people watching can relate to you uh of course i sell houses what i do mm -hmm. right you put an offer in on another house you get it accepted there's this span of time where you're packing up your your house and you're going to be moving to the other there's some anxiety mm -hmm. associated with that right Oh, can we get it all packed? Can we, you know, how are we going to get it on a truck? What's the timing going to look like? Mm -hmm. Am I going to like this place? Am my neighbor's going to be okay? Yeah. Right. Like all, <laughs> all of these, all of these thoughts, whether yeah. you realize it or not, yeah. you have all this anxiety. Mm -hmm. Now take that and realize that you have that anxiety literally every day, every hour of your life. Yes. You're constantly, okay, am I going to be able to stay in the motel again tonight? Mm -hmm. Or am I going to have to sleep in the car? If we sleep in the car, where are we going to park? If we get parked somewhere at three o'clock in the morning, is a cop going to come and tell us to move on? You know, is there is is somebody else going to try to rob us? Is there like how am I going to get to school? How tomorrow? am I going to get to school? You know, am I going to show up at school in in the car with all literally all of our yeah. stuff piled yeah. up and everybody's going to know? Yep. And yep. you know, like, and it never stops. That anxiety never. There is no end to it. You're correct. And that is our goal. Our goal is to break that, that that doesn't have to be, again, I'm going to use Lamarius as an example, walking with him through eight years. This young man is going to be a success in life. Number one, as a human. And number two, he's not going to have to deal with this stuff. He's going to break that cycle. He's going to be the first one to be able to break that cycle and get an apartment and get a house and really work his way out of what he's grown up in. And I think the I I think along with um, I don't want to use her name, but who's on campus right now, you know, she wants to be a veterinarian, you know. And I'm like, that's then do it. She's and she's, she's good. She can, and it's so awesome. And it's gonna break that cycle for her. Yeah. And then her family, you know, is not gonna have to live that life and have all that all that baggage that you were talking about. So. Um, and even we still have a couple that are um, that are older that are working full time jobs, you know, and they're and they're doing really well, um, you know, 18, 19 that didn't want to go to college. So it's not just all about the college, but it's sure. about showing them what work is, showing them that they can break out of this cycle. And a couple of them we had to bring in and work with us because they weren't ready for the real world. Yeah. You know, we had to teach them how to come to work on time. I had to teach them like, hey, man, you can't just not show up. you got to call in and say that you're sick. Yeah. You know, all these life lessons, right, of what it takes to be able to make it out in the real in the real world. Um, we have the opportunity to be able to do so. But um, that that's our goal. I mean, our goal for us is success every day. I don't uh, I hate when people say that you can't save them all, because if I felt that way, why even wake up in the morning? I mean, you're just going to look in a group of kids. Oh, someone's not going to make it. No, <laughs> all of our kids are going to make it. And even if they move on and do, you know, transit and go somewhere else, you know, we we hope that we're dropping that seed. You know, we're just hoping every kid that we touch and have the opportunity um, to be around that we're dropping. Hopefully, you know, just those seeds, just those seeds, just, just those simply seeds. telling them that they can. Yeah, absolutely. And, and meaning it. Yeah. And then saying and here's at least one plan on yeah. how how it's possible. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it's 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 been really good, man. Um, and again, just just walking with them, 
you know, and what, what their needs are, you know, and sometimes it's taking care of basic needs. You know, we do a lot of food. We do, you know, we do clothing. We do hygiene products. We do um, everything that you would do with your own kids and take care of. That's what we try to do. Yeah. And again, just walk, walking alongside of a mom or a grandma. Yeah. Wow. Um, all right. So um, obviously school year just started. You guys have been switching those schedules around <laughs> yeah. getting everybody going the right direction. Yeah. You've got your own brood as well. <laughs> so, um, you know, I got a few. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so all kinds of stuff going on right now, but I know we've got some things on the horizon uh, mm -hmm. that are coming up. So uh, let's talk New Year's first because that's that's the big one, right? It is. It is. So this will be our third year of our New Year's Eve bash mm -hmm. um, right down right downtown at the Walnut House. Mm -hmm. We'll have a meal beforehand. Um, and then we have a great opportunity that we celebrate New Year's Eve at 10, 11 and 12. So everybody doesn't have to stay out all night long. You can come Old in. Old to young. They, absolutely. There you go. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but it's a red carpet affair. I mean, we have uh, the valet parking and just the whole atmosphere. We do the casino games as well and the dancing and, you know, just a, just a great night of celebrating um, New Year's, of course, and just, you know, um, downtown and, and endure, Murfreesboro. And guys, endure, it is. It, it is a celebration. So it is a fundraiser. It, it is. is a celebration. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but, yeah, so we're excited about year three and see how that goes. Very good. Okay. Anything else? that you want to plug while we're yeah so if anybody's interested um for us right now is we're the rest of this month we're really pushing our champion club members so those are our um our our, our donors that support us on a monthly basis mm -hmm. um and um as we continue to grow continue to serve more kids we need more champion club members to be able to join us they can go to our website and endureathletics.org okay got it endureathletics.org um and volunteer opportunities is that absolutely a... absolutely um if anybody's interested just email us at info at endureathletics.org and uh, we have a whole slew of opportunities for everybody and i'm gonna go ahead and mention it you said i could you said i could sort of mention it right? <laughs> yeah go so ahead. it's in the pre 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 planning pre, yeah, absolutely so you guys are looking um down the road long-term goal uh yes. to build a facility to build a a, a place yes what is what is, in your closing joel's eyes and imagining what that place looks like what it, what is it well luckily our architect has already put it on paper for us <laughs> so he's, he's pulled that out um but we do own land already so we do own the property and you're, um, you're more than pre 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 planning then i mean like well there's still there's so much behind the scenes as yeah. far as you know getting the geotech work drilling these holes to make sure how much land we got to sure. take you know all this i get that so that's what I'm saying, like the pre, 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 pre. Um, but you got a spot and a plan. We got a spot and a plan. That's two big ones. So it is big. It is big. Um, but yeah, so right now we use different churches, open their up their facilities to us. Um, MTSU opens up to us. So we do a lot of different stuff just around town. But um, our facility will have everything that we need as far as a kitchen goes. Um, gym, outdoor space you know, um, all the different rec center stuff, if you will, and mm -hmm. learning and, and all that will be, um, what we do at our facility. And, and the good part with us is like our, cause we transport all of our kids, you know, it takes, it's an hour and a half to be able to pick everybody up to get to our current location mm -hmm. where we're at. We're kind of more centralized to um, the South church street area. And then, um, so with that, we're going to be able to serve a lot more kids to kind of rotate them through our programs. Um, so we, because we won't have a three hour drive time. Right. I mean, like that's, we lose it. We lose a lot of, a yeah. lot of time with that. No doubt. Um, so yeah, we're really excited about it. It's going to be about 7,200 square foot ish. And, um, yeah, we'll see where it ends up going here, but it's, there'll be more coming in next year. You'll, you'll definitely hear more Capital about campaign. It. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. You heard Abs it. Absolutely. Start saving up. So that. That's right. It's, it's going to be um it's gonna be very 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 exciting you know and you know because we also think about it too like you know our kids all move around all the time and then we move them around all the time and just to have a place that they can always come back to you this is always it. always come back to your 5 10 15 years is like let me go check in what's going on with endure you know yeah um and a place for them that um 
we can put up their schoolwork, their artwork, their yeah. school pictures, you know, all those different things again that we do at our own house for our own kids. Um, you know, to do Ownership right there. Ownership leads to stability. Absolutely. I mean, that's just that's just how it how it works. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. Yep. So very cool. Super exciting, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. All right. <laughs> so save the date for New Year's. Yeah. Um, if you don't have plans somewhere else, you should make plans here. If you do have plans somewhere else, you should probably cancel them and hey, still make plans us. Um, over here. Um, New Year's is on December 31st this year. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, bleeding yes. into January 1st. Yes. Um, so that way you can save the date really easily. <laughs> it's, it's Just making it's, sure everybody yeah, knows yeah, that. No. It hasn't it's like, changed. It's, it's not like Halloween, right? Like, hey, when is when's Halloween? Yeah. Halloween's on Halloween. Yeah. I mean, I don't go trick-or-treating on, you know. Yeah. Traffic. Exactly. That, yeah. Little pet peeve of mine. We, when are, when is, yeah, I know me too. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Christmas is December 25th? But when what? are we celebrating it? Yeah, though? exactly. Like, anyway, bless our hearts. <laughs> um, all right. Joel Bigelow, Endure Athletics. Uh, what's the website? One more time. Endureathletics.org. Got it. Hey, and real quick, I uh, didn't do it. Um, our buddy Brian Nail over at Premise Mortgage uh, is a huge supporter of all things Spread the Positive. Um, friend, mutual mm -hmm. friend yep. here as well. Um, also happens to be a fantastic mortgage lender. Uh, so if you need help navigating uh, this particular mortgage uh, environment, because it's it's a little different, it's it's challenging. <laughs> yeah, you should definitely uh, hit up Brian. So let's let's hear from him real quick. Hey, my name is Brian Nail. I'm a mortgage loan officer with Premise Bank Mortgage. I want to tell you that I absolutely love being a member of the Spread the Positive Network. It's such a great mission and helps to bring so much positivity to our community. It's truly a pleasure to be part of. There are a lot of ways to navigate finance in a home, and in markets like this, having the advice of a trusted local professional is key to making sure you get the right advice for your specific circumstances. Whether you're interested in the purchase of a new home, second home, or have a need for a refinance, I'd love to earn your trust. If I can help you nail your mortgage, Call me at 615-243-3976 or visit knowyourmortgage.com. Premise Mortgage is a subsidiary of Premise Bank, a member of FDIC, Equal Housing Opportunity. As always, all loans are subject to approval. Premise Mortgage, NMLS number 1894879. Friend and, and to be in the same community with you, dude, he does a lot yep. uh, for this area. Yep. Um, Trent, you got anything, bud? Man, uh, I'll just say I've been been a big big believer in all things in there. I don't want to start crying real quick, but uh, man, I only uh, have one hanky on me. So <laughs> yeah, but it's been amazing watching uh, Joel and the fam. Uh, they've just put every every single bit of faith and every, I mean, blood, sweat, and tears, literally, um, to help these kids and. Like you said, it, I think uh, the most special thing is just the the bond that these kids develop. And um, I've been around a lot of you know you know, at, after school care stuff and, you know, playing sports with kids over the years. It's something I love a lot, but there's something special about what they're doing here at Endure. And that's why I've been, you know, such a big proponent and supporter of what they do. Uh, Joel is the first person on the STP pod <laughs> way yeah, back when, yeah. sitting awkwardly in my living room <laughs> with a MacBook Pro and a USB microphone, episode one. But literally, um, it's just been really cool to see. And, you know, the building, Joel's had all these dreams of you know he had a dream of a house back in the day and now it's just like what what god's provided and what's you know this this new elevation and new evolution of yeah. all things in Deer hub is I, I saw the renderings and just broke down we're <laughs> and sam's just balling together and it was um it's special what they're doing man i i think if you if you have the resources to support something in the area there's not a better i'll just say it, there's not a better cause in my opinion that it's mm -hmm. Very hands-on, very direct, and the impacts just, you know, I mean, it's it's it really is breaking that cycle versus, you know, there's a lot of band-aids that we can put on a lot of situations, but the work they're doing is uh, different. So, yeah, shout out to you, man. Thank yeah. you, Trent. Love your brother. Love that. A um, couple other things coming up. Uh, just wanted to throw those out there. So, we've got uh, Charity Chopped in the borough mm -hmm. coming up. Uh, so, excited about that. Shannon Thursday, Wheeler. Man. Uh, yeah. It's, That's I, I know. Two days so yours truly here out. will be one of the quote celebrity chefs. All right. Let's talk. Let's talk about that. Right? I, I got right. a little so time. Let, how let you me feeling, tell you. Man? Let me tell you how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> I read the, I read an email from Chantel. Uh, she's been stocking the pantry, and it said, "And you can bring five pantry items of your choosing 
to <laughs> to, to do <laughs> your to you know to represent your style or whatever and i went what is my style uh, yes, exactly <laughs> exactly so i was like uh i was speechless <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my son. If you didn't hear that, he's in the, and he goes, "Is it mac and cheese?" Yeah, funny, hilarious. I'm gonna bring a bring a stack of American cheese slices. Um, it's gonna be great. Uh, maybe some hot dogs or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But so, uh, so anyway, so I'm excited about that. But you're pretty nice. Like you're pretty. You're a decent cook, right? I'm, I'm a decent. Yeah, cook. you're in grill. Like the grill skills. Are yeah, there. I can I can cook. I, yeah. I know my way around a kitchen. Yeah. Um, but uh, they're going to give us this mystery box and okay. say good luck. Legendary. Yeah. yeah, so me and Jason Matheson uh, from Primrose Table are Team Food. Um, so if you don't know what the what the premise is, you've got uh, Team Food, Team Clothing, Team Shelter. So it's um, uh, Second Harvest Food Bank is who yeah. we're representing, and then Amelia's Closet for yeah. uh, clothing, and then Habitat uh, Rutherford County Habitat for um, shelter. And uh, so it's 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 a, a community member and then an actual chef um, are the are, are each team. <laughs> so it's me and Jason Matheson from from Primrose, Hello. and uh, you know it doesn't really matter who the other ones are. So because we're gonna we're gonna beat them. I was about to say you're about to shout out the competition. That's later. it. Uh, no, nah, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. I will say I gotta give Becky Landham some. Credit. I was just gonna her, say her stuff has been hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah the well, content she's she can making. be as funny as she wants. It, it, what <laughs> really still matters kind of is third place. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I'm saying. But, that uh, at? So it's going to be at Liberty Station, okay. uh, which is right there behind Toots. That's mm-hmm. uh, the other uh, organization that Jody um, Jody has. But we're doing some watch parties as well. So uh, Cedar Glade uh, Brews, uh, of course, I'm one of the owners of that. Mm-hmm. Um, we're doing a watch party over there. Brian uh, Nail and Grady Payne um, from F&M uh, Bank are the co-host, co-sponsors okay. for that event. Um, be a $25 donation at the door, you get an appetizer from mission tacos and a beer with that. Um, and, uh, and our goal is to raise, raise a decent amount of money at the watch Absolutely. party, Thanks. but it'll be, it'll be Trent over here, I guess, yeah. has his hand in. I'm a, I'm the online or I'm the onsite correspondent. I'm going to be uh, yep. bouncing around from the watch party to watch party. So okay. it's the plan is to start at the warehouse, then go to the Walnut house, then end up at Cedar Glade and then maybe make a quick, uh, Quick little appearance over at uh, uh, Liberty Station as there they wrap go. it up, but it's gonna be super cool. Yeah, that's like we're that's, gonna. I think you we're guys gonna have, have live really stream. cool with that. Event. Yeah, we're gonna. I think we're gonna have streams from all the locations, and um, yeah, it's gonna be cool. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. I, oh, shout, I, out, shout out to Michael Lynn White. She's the on site person. So yeah, we're gonna yeah, kind of yeah. be. Yeah. Thank you, Michael Lynn. Yeah, she's she's gonna kill that. So it's gonna I, be really uh, fun. I am getting a little nervous. So I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I, I, I would be. Yeah. I'm pulling for you. I, I have talked a little it, bit man. of trash, so now I've, I'm starting to wonder. Hey, that 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 video y'all did was pretty pretty swagger. Like, yeah, you, you y'all y'all just kind of like with the arms folded and yeah, I and mean, the, the knuckle crack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was, was awesome. Good stuff. So we're we're pumped about that. That's but, awesome. Um, but anyway, and at the end of the day, it's a lot of fun Absolutely. for three very very worthwhile Absolutely. organizations that are doing yeah. a lot of good work here yes. in our community. So. Um, excited to be part of that. Um, other than that, Cedar Glade's got uh, a, a low country boil coming up in October. Tickets nice. are on okay. sale for that. Um, we're not fundraising for anything. We're just going to have some great food from Gandhi Seafood, Yum. and uh, they're cooking on site. Oh, nice. snap. And, they're uh, doing it? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's going to be a blast, man. Uh, so tickets are on sale for that. Uh, it's October 21st. And we've got Stein holding. So, um, I've seen that. Yeah, I've seen- you, you got it. I, I well, you can I do it, man. Look at your wrist, like, dude. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot of Irish in me. You yeah, know, so. yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> the Stein holding competition. We had our first round this past Thursday. Uh, the next qualifier is the twenty fourth, and then the championship is on the thirtieth. Uh-huh. Uh, so six men and six women from each of those uh, qualifiers will participate in the championship. School. So and there's a state tournament. Can you believe this? That's crazy. That's so crazy. the top male and top female can go to the state Amazing. tournament in Knoxville. And, uh, <laughs> and it's compete. wild. You guys do some really cool stuff down there, though, man. Yeah, like we, it's you're really doing something different and unique and cool and community based type stuff. It's it's really neat. Uh, we got some cool stuff coming. Um, I, I'm not going to spill all the beans, but uh, our 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 building is really boring. And it's about to not be. Hey, all right. That's all, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so pretty pumped about that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's cool stuff, man. That's about it. Yep. Trent, that was appreciate it. you, buddy. Yeah, man. Joel, always Thank a pleasure, you. sir. Love you, Joel. Huge fan. 
Go Keep cut the check. Cut the check, Tinder Athletics. Just do it. That's it. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> All right. Y'all have a good rest of the week. Talk to you soon. Let me just tell you, I was weird with no headphones. Thanks for checking out Table Talk today. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you have any questions whatsoever about real estate, check us out at jharmanhometeam.com or on Facebook and Instagram at jharmanhometeam. 